That was fun. Thank you for picking that. <laughs> well, let's continue in prayer. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for coming and breathing into us and moving us and calling us forward. Help us to remember that today and to celebrate that and to know that Pentecost is not over, but that you have called us to do great things on behalf of, the, of those who need help, of those who need to hear hope, and those who are moving on to new things. In your gracious name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Creator, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, there's so much excitement um, for those of us who, who like things like Pentecost. <laughs> it's a one day a year celebration, the 50th day of, um, of Easter. But one of the things that we could do, and I've been thinking about this all week, and um, about my children's sermon, and I have to confess probably more about that because it's so fun. I thought about having everybody make pinwheels. And I thought about having us all run through here with flames of fire. And I thought about all these different things. And then I, you know, I had this book about penguins. And I thought, oh, you know what? I, I learned through so many different ways that instead of um, one more cutesy little thing that we could do as a congregation and, and being the flames of fire, we could think about how God has worked in so many different ways in the life of faith, all of creation, and we can even learn from the penguins. You know, a few years ago there was the um, the March of the Penguins. Is that the name of it? Um, and I just love the fact that you know they actually make um, they actually make progress going like this because yesterday I was running and I was thinking, oh, 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 I can make it up that hill. <laughs> After I'm up the hill, then I can come down the hill. Yay! <laughs> You know, and I was reading the book again last night because I was looking through thinking, you know, um, how are we going to stretch this into uh, making make connections? But you know what? I want to talk about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit bringing the breath of, li of life into us, breathing the breath of life into us. Because yesterday when I was breathing, going up that hill, and thinking, you are too old to be running. Would you just knock it off? Or, why did you think this was a good idea? Or, nobody's going to know if you're not running. Just you, except you're going to confess it to the whole congregation. <laughs> because, but, the importance of breath to us. You know, um, if we were to read a little bit further in that Romans text from um, Romans 8, the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And that wonderful text, passage in Acts 2, that most of you are thrilled that you are not called upon to read because it has all those interesting um, all those interesting city names that we can't say and that you hope that nobody will correct you on because none of us will. The Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost. That is what we're talking about. That's the focus really of today. John 14, we had two weeks ago, if, in case you hadn't, if it sounded familiar, yes. <laughs> it should have sounded familiar because we do get it twice. That's because they expect us to look more at actual Pentecost today. They had come together for the traditional um, excitement, the festival of Pentecost. It wasn't new to the church. It was a festival that they celebrated all the time. It is the 50th day of Easter. It is the day then that the Holy Spirit comes and sets upon them with, they talk about fire. Now, you know, many years ago we gave up the whole idea of doing anything with fire in the church because that's just not cool. You don't want to do anything because we don't want to test the Holy Spirit. 
you know, we don't want to screw anything up and hurt anybody. But the whole, the t tongues, the flames of fire coming down, and the connection to the Old Testament story of the Tower of Babel, how at the Tower of Babel, the tongues were confused because they were trying to get to heaven. And now we have, at the time of Pentecost, everybody understanding. They're all speaking in their own language, but they're, they're understanding. They're hearing it. And what was the assumption? They're drunk. But it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, we might not know that for our own life experience, but it is possible to be drunk by 9 o'clock in the morning. Just, just to clarify that. And as we found on our, um, because of the 24-hour clock, we were, Michaela was Facebooking um, Ryan in Japan, and it's almost 11 o'clock at night when we were just about 9 o'clock here. He wasn't drunk, he was washing dishes and Facebooking his cousin. But we know that it's not just like that. So it's not that they just understood because they were drunk, but they understand because something huge is happening. The Holy Spirit has made it possible. Now I'm thinking that, let's take it beyond just thinking that they understood the different languages. Huge. But I think it's more understanding, more the aha moment. The more the, oh, I get it. I get a bigger picture. I am understanding more clearly what's happening here. I do believe they understood the different languages. That's huge here. But I do believe also it's that new understanding. The new understanding that we as people of faith are called to embrace in different ways. What is God calling us to? Always calling us to something new. Always calling us to walk faithfully forward. Whether you're graduating from high school, whether we're calling a new pastor, whether we are, whatever it is that we are being called to do, we are called forward because we believe. We believe in the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has not stopped working. The Pentecost, the day of Pentecost has not stopped. In our time together, we've talked often about seeing, looking for God happening. And so my question and my challenge to you is where is God calling you? Not just Grace Lutheran, but you. You as people of faith. What is God calling you to do? Maybe you need to take your little strip of red home. If you need some, we have plenty. And hang it someplace. I'm good with those reminders. I love those reminders. To think, what has God called me to do today? What is God calling me to do and to see and how is the Holy Spirit working in my life? What is the new understanding I'm being asked to hear? It's exciting. It's an exciting time to be the church. It is an exciting time to be the people of faith. Because with all the ups and downs of life, we know that we are in it with others. We have a community a community of faithful throughout the world. God has called us to understand, to understand that we are called to be his hands and feet, that whenever we gather in God's name, whenever we share, share the word with others and share our time of worship, whenever we open ourselves up and out. We are part of that Pentecost experience. People understanding, people knowing, knowing that God is there for them. Whether it's a calm breeze 
or the gush of a mighty wind. God is there in the midst. That's what's really cool. I believe this next song that we sing, Spirit of Gentleness, might be unfamiliar. It um, came out in the 70s, so <laughs> yes, it's new. It might be new. Um, I would do my best to lead, and I would encourage that if you like to read the music to follow along, that you look in the hymnal. But it's a beautiful song that does talk so much about the spirit of gentleness in our life and our work together as a church. Amen.